Hello YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I am Doc Luxury and I'm here with another video for you. This time I'm going to talk about a uh, experience I had or I have with an item that I purchased overseas being held up in US Customs. So yeah, stay tuned to see what I have to say about that. Okay, so this um, <clears throat> purchase happened now I think um, a at least a couple months ago because um, August, September, now at least maybe two or three months ago. So what had happened is I purchased an item from someone on Instagram, supposedly a you know popular seller a seller with a lot of followers, a seller that I have come to trust over um, the past, I don't know how long I have been keeping, you know, that I've been following this person. Anyways, this person is located in Singapore and there are a few items on my list that I am looking for and one of them was a a yen wallet, a Chanel yen wallet. And let me just tell you, thank goodness that this happened, um, you know, with, I mean, it's unfortunate that it happened at all, but I'm glad that it happened to something that did not have um, a huge monetary value associated with it. I mean, this item, so I purchased it for about, I think, 650 US dollars, okay? And me being, um, you know, the cheapo that I am sometimes, and not liking to pay fees of any kind, I tried to, um, you know, and I did trust the seller. I basically used TransferWise because that was one of the um, accepted ways to pay. PayPal invoice was also accepted, but I did not want to pay extra fees for, for that despite it only being like, you know, an extra $50 or so. So that is another thing I wanted to tell you guys. If you have never, never purchased an item from somebody before, always go with PayPal invoice because at least with PayPal invoice, you are protected. Um, with TransferWise, you are not. And so that was the biggest issue with this case. But let me back up and tell you what had happened. So I ordered this item, the, the, the seller shipped. Now, I looked at pictures of the item. I did not um, look at the, all of the pictures very carefully, but um, after you know inspection, there was no picture of the date code or the authenticity no, the authenticity sticker inside of the item or the authenticity card. And <clears throat> I just purchased it because an item that I have been always waiting for had popped up on Instagram for, um, you know, for sale. And I did not want to hesitate in, um, <clears throat> you know, <laughs> in looking out over carefully, which is a really big mistake. Anyway, so the person shipped it and shipped it through DHL and so I was not home when the item was del was when they tried to deliver the item because I was at work and this is one thing I really did not like what the seller um, said or um, you know did was that she was saying that, you know, why wasn't I at home? I knew that the item would be coming on this day, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, excuse me, well, I work and I am not going to be home during the day, especially during the weekdays. And so that is one thing I really did not like what happened with this with this case. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so the seller calmed down and um, I should be the one, um, you know, furious at this point because Oh, so anyway, so what had happened, so I am like going all over the place because this has, this happened a long time ago and I'm trying to get my, my thoughts straight here. But so they attempted delivery one time 
and after that attempted delivery I had requested to pick it up at the DHL location and um, after that I went to the DHL the next day and they said um, you know they gave me a, a piece of paper with a tracking history and a phone number to call and they basically said that US Customs is in possession of this item. I'm like, what? And so I'm like, what? And so, you know, I immediately called the, the phone number. And let me tell you, U.S. Customs, especially U.S. Customs here in Minneapolis, Minnesota, are, are assholes, you know? I tried to call and, um, you know, U.S. Customs are supposed to be on my side as an American citizen, but, you know, they're not protecting me. They already, you know, thought, you know, from the minute I said that this item came from Singapore, that this item was fake. And so they told me basically to, um, to wait and I will receive something in the mail. And um, yeah, so I told the seller this, and that's when she got, when that's when she went off on me, saying like, you know, why the hell weren't you at home? Blah blah blah. And um, okay, so she doesn't know she doesn't know me. She doesn't know if I'm a scammer or anything like that. So I would probably be, you know, jumping to conclusions and um, things like that also. But you know. I thought that was totally rude and you know anyway so what happened so US Customs was in possession of my item and they are currently still in possession of this item um, and let me just show you so this is an envelope that I received from where is it if it'll focus US Customs and Border Patrol and the letter that I received is in here is a multi-page letter one two three four five it is a six page letter in fact and so what they had kept on telling me whenever i would call they would say i would receive i would receive a uh, receive a letter in the mail between four and six weeks and so six weeks come along and i still don't get this letter and i received this letter finally maybe after two months of this item being held in their possession and yeah this is just one of the worst experiences I've had with purchasing any type of item luxury or not it's like what the hell and this letter basically says that um, the item was deemed as a counterfeit and the appraised value was nine dollars they gave me several options here and like you know the bulk of this basically explains it all but this is the um, the paper that I need to basically return with the decision that I have and they give me five different options one is that I request that CBP which stands for Customs and Border Patrol consider my petition administratively before forfeiture proceedings are initiated. Number two, I request that CBP consider my offer and compromise administratively before forfeiture proceedings are initiated. Now this um, option, and there is a part inside of this other document that says it, the minimum that I would have to offer I think is like $250, which is ridiculous in itself for an item that is only worth nine dollars and then number three is that I abandon the property and I request that CBP begin administrative proceedings to forfeit the property number four I request that CBP send my case for court action which likely would mean that I would have to hire a lawyer and number five is I request that CBP begin administrative proceedings to forfeit the property <sighs> anyway so after I got this letter, I um, showed it to the, and keep in mind, this has been like two months already that I, one, I don't have my money, and two, I don't have the item. And so I showed this to the, um, to the seller, and actually before I received this letter, she had 
um, offered to refund me 50% of my um, of the purchase price of this item. So that was about you know 300 or so dollars. I'm like, no, I never received this item. It is your responsibility for you know this item to be in my position before you are off the hook with you know your responsibility and she had thought that her responsibility as a seller is to primarily you know ship the item and have it um cross into the united states but that is total bullshit anyways because me as a seller myself i would take complete responsibility if it did not receive or if the seller if the buyer did not receive the item Anyways, I talked to several people, including Lauren, aka Style via Lauren. Thanks again for all your help during this, um, you know, long process. It's, it's, it was just really, really horrible experience. Anyways, and so once this came in the mail, um, <clears throat> you know, I showed it to her, and I also contacted several other people, including the Louis Vuitton um, and Chanel the Ritzy Facebook moderator and she said that I should totally be um, you know refunded the entire amount anyways I told the seller that I would do a review on my YouTube channel which I am doing right now that um, you know to, to ask you guys what should have been done what the seller should have done what the buyer me should have done and um, <clears throat> yeah what had happened um, eventually was that she gave me my entire refund back and so yeah, and that's why I'm not gonna blast her or anything like that on this video so yeah if you guys have any experience with this kind of issue I'd be happy to hear what you have to say and I wish I had done this video a lot sooner because yeah, I already got I already received this and I do have to return this letter within the next few days or so. But yeah, I just wanted to, you know, come on here and tell you of an experience because like I said, um I like to share experiences with you good or bad and um this is just one of those experiences that was not a very good thing. Um yeah, that does it for this video. I'm sorry this is a little bit of a downer, but you know, things in life can't always be marshmallows and strawberries. <laughs> I just made that up. But anyway, so that does it for this video. I am going to be late for dinner reservations, so I will leave it at that. And um, yeah, if you have any comments or, like I said, if you have any comments about this um, situation, please leave them down below. And yeah, stay tuned for more videos. And until next time, remember to be you and stay confident. Take care, you guys. Goodbye.